that early. Um, oh, uh, Christian, I spoke with uh, Madeline Innocent. She will not be here tonight. Okay. Okay. Maybe we should send her a cut. She lost her dog, and she's really uh, she's she's just disconsolate. It's it's. And I know what that's like. So send her condolence card. So James, Richard, have you guys had a hard time uh, with with um, people showing their vaccination? Has it been a hassle to show their vax cards if they're going inside? Not really. Uh, I think most people are uh, pretty straight up. They mm -hmm. they come in and they have it. They have most of them have it on their phone. Yeah. So it, it, it's not too bad. You Good. Know, I Good. thought it was going to be a lot worse, but uh, no, it's it's not too bad. The so biggest. The biggest issue that I have with it is that some people don't have it on an app, so they're just like this with their pictures, <laughs> a picture yeah. of their card yeah. like a month ago. So it's like, all right, let's go. Just get one of the apps or something. Make it your yeah. screensaver. I don't know. <laughs> the first time that happened to me, we said Oceana. And it took me. It took me like five minutes. I said, I'm just standing here for a minute to find because I had it. You know, I'd taken a photograph of it, and it was in right. all my photographs. So. Yeah. So I got the app. I gave it up. <laughs> so, hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Thanks. I'm Leticia Young from Lolo's Seafood Shack and Lolo's Tacos. How's everyone hey. doing today? Cool. That's great. <laughs> Welcome to the neighborhood. This is fun. Hi, Doug. Thank you. <laughs> I love tacos. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> Who doesn't love tacos, right? <laughs> and I have this theory because they're so small, they're not fattening. So I eat a lot of them. Oh yeah, I like that theory. I yeah. second that emotion. <laughs> Wow, Doug, you're taking the scenic route, dude. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's my dad's birthday tonight, so I, oh. I was celebrating. I wanted to do both. I wasn't sure I was going to make the meeting tonight, so I, I'm on my way to my home office now. Gotcha. Well, okay. no, 92. Rosie. What's that, Linda? That was Nosy Rosie. Oh, I hear her. Yeah. <laughs> I wrote a song about her. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I mean, I'm starting to write a song about her. I've got to figure out, you know, the the the, the <laughs> instruments. <laughs> I've got a mean old dog, <laughs> and she's just <laughs> like me. <laughs> Remember, That's we're like, great. We're live streaming. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So we don't have a quorum yet, no. but then again, we've got another minute. That's right. Yeah, okay. we've, you know, we've, we've got an expanded uh, committee, which is so cool. I'm so happy. We have, a, we have some new members? We do. Oh, great. Yeah. Madeline's oh, you... not going to be joining us tonight. We should all send her a, a condolence card for she lost her dog. Oh, I know. Oh, I'm so sorry. I know she was. Years. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. And she had a nice old dog. As yeah. opposed to nosy Rosie. <laughs> <laughs> she can hear you. Uh, she hasn't come in yet. <laughs> uh, uh, Miranda, Miranda emailed me. She, 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 she may not be able to stay for the whole movie. Okay. Hello? So all the applicants are here and not our, uh, Irene is not here. She should be here any second. I, I certainly hope so. Christine, did she say she was gonna run late tonight? Uh, no. Hmm. Well, it's exactly 5.30 and we have uh, nine people 
So we need five people. One, two, three, four. Oh, we've got five. One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to uh, turn off my camera for a moment. I'm getting on a bus, but I'll be on listening and participating. You're here. That's good. Ah, oh, hey, Arena. Oh, we've got a quorum. Hey. I dig it. This is great. Actually, uh, let's see. We need one more for quorum. <laughs> No, wait, we, we have, we've got nine people. We've got uh, five we, people. We, we got 10 people in our committee. We have 10 people? Yeah. Oh. About police here, so we have four of them. I counted nine. Oh, there's Paul. We got it. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have six people. Okay. So let's start then. Yeah. Oh, Raina, you're on mute. Unmute yourself, please. <laughs> I see you're smiling. <laughs> Just unmute yourself. There you go. <laughs> can the board members themselves that so I can mark you present, please? Okay. Um, so you broke up. Do you, do you want to know who's present right now? Okay. Yeah, just if the board members could, uh, the committee members. Um, put your hands up. Members, just, just identify themselves in the chat as present. And then the board members, if they could do the same, um, who are not committee members. Okay. So I can, I can uh, so the uh, minutes will reflect. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's even better. Uh, putting your hands up. And I'll just let you know when to take your hands down. Thank you. I did both. Holy moly. Ready? All right. There um, you go. Uh, okay, Linda, Christian, Josh, Paul. Uh, I don't see Miranda. Yeah, she's here. Oh, Miranda's here. How about Madeline? I, I know well, Madeline won't here. be here tonight. She's, okay. she's, she's grieving. Uh, oh, there's, there's Miranda. Thank you, Miranda. I see Doug. And is Andrew here yet? No, yeah. but Josh Cohen is here. Yeah, I got Josh. What about Benjamin? Yes. Not here yet. Yeah, he's here. Oh, he's wait, I see here. Benjamin. Okay, we're set. Hi, Benjamin. We're set. All right. Oh, is this a document I can? All right, thank you. So we've got a forum and we can begin. And before we do anything, I just want to welcome mm -hmm. uh, Benjamin Wu and Miranda Goodwin Rob. Um, welcome to BCI committee. And we're very, very happy to have you join us. So um, thank you, Linda. Happy to be here. I'm thrilled. <laughs> so thank you. Okay. Do we get get started? Yeah, let's start. Yes. Okay. Agavi's in the house. How are you? Hello there. Hi. Good evening, Community Board 7. My name is Ben Savitsky of Bernstein Reno. I'm here on behalf of Agave Fields, LLC. I have with me Jim McCartan, and I think uh, uh, James O'Hanlon is on as well. They are the operators of this establishment. We are here tonight for a new on-premises uh, liquor license for a restaurant. It's going to be a full on-premises liquor license, and it's at 688 Columbus Avenue. That's between 93rd and 94th Street. Some of you may be familiar with this space. It was the old Gabriella's, I think, for about uh, 15 years. Uh, which closed, I think, pretty early on in the pandemic, maybe even a little bit before. before so it's been a vacant space, yeah. Um, it's right next to uh, to New Amsterdam Burger, if you're not familiar with Gabriella's. So as I mentioned, it, it's going to be a restaurant like Gabriella's, and it's also going to be serving Mexican cuisine like Gabriella's. The name is going to be Agave. Uh, James and Jim actually operate two other Agaves here in Manhattan. There's one in Kipps Bay and one in Greenwich Village. They also have a sister restaurant called Mojave in, uh, in Astoria. So they're experienced in the industry. Um, they can answer some questions about themselves and the method of operation, but I quickly just want to run through the specifics of the application. And I think one important thing to note is this location. This is not a 500 foot matter. There are not three or more licenses within 500 feet, so it's somewhat novel for Manhattan and even for the Upper West Side. As far as the specifics of the application, they're going to be serving Mexican cuisine, as I mentioned. We included a copy of the menu at tab three, but it's pretty standard Mexican fare. Quesadillas, tacos, enchiladas, platters with chicken and steak, things like that. Um, they will be serving lunch, brunch, and dinner. Proposed hours of operation are 10 a.m. to 2 a.m. daily. There's an interior and an exterior part of this restaurant, if you're familiar with Gabriella's. On the inside, we're going to have 28 tables with 116 seats. There's a stand-up bar and 22 bar stools. 
And then on the outside, which is within property line, it's set back a little bit. There is 16 tables with 72 seats. We included a copy of the uh, floor plan at tab two uh, in the package we submitted. Uh, as for music, they're only gonna be having recorded background music. As I mentioned, James and Jim are pretty established in the industry and they have been operating this method of operation for a while. They're excited to come to the Upper West Side. This is their first restaurant up here. And um, I think it's going to be good. I think it's going to fill a space that's been vacant for a while. And um, I think the neighbors are really going to enjoy it. With that, I'll Mr. open it up. Mr. Sabitsky, uh, yes. I'm looking at your method of operations right in front of me. And it says 10 a.m. to 12 a.m., not 2 so a.m. We submitted a, uh, an updated uh, application earlier this morning mm -hmm. to the office to Jesse, And she said she was going to pass it around, which is going to be uh, 2 a.m. Okay. Any questions from the committee? Excuse me a moment. Yes. Uh, 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 do you see uh, uh, in, uh, when uh, they move to the uh, new program with the open uh, this uh, street city? Did you see uh, you guys uh, using the street city? I'm sorry. Are we going to open this? Or are we going to use it for open streets? Yeah. I mean, there's a pretty prominent outdoor area already and it, it is covered. So I think they're gonna be using that. But if open restaurants is available by the time that they open, I'm sure that they will be using some outdoor space as well, just because I think it's what people prefer now during COVID. I don't think we can be in the outs. No, no, because there's a bus stop. There's a bus stop. Yeah, that's what I was just gonna say. And they won't be using it. There's a bus stop. No, no, uh, I'm going to be curbside, but they do have, they have a lot of space in front. They always had an outdoor space, yeah. You've right. got a, you've got a lot of frontage there, so I think it also that restaurant is when it was Gabriella's was open till two p.m. I mean two a.m. It just it's you know it, it's not an area that uh, that's that congested, so I think you should be okay there. Sure. Yeah, I, I I just wanted to say that I I live around the corner, and I am delighted yeah, that. Um, this restaurant, um, one that it, that that a new restaurant is coming in, because um, this is a, a very large frontage, and for it to be closed really impacts that block. Um, and it's great that um, Mexican uh, cuisine is coming back to the community. It was very popular when Gabriela's was there, so um, I am in full support. Thank, Thank you. you. And I think one other thing Thank to note you. is that they, they are going to be doing cosmetic upgrades. So it is going to, it's going to look a little bit fresher, which is, which is a good thing. Great. A, Great. a lot fresher. Do we have any more comments from uh, the committee? Uh, Doug. Uh, Doug? Uh, hi everybody. I just wanted to say that I will not be voting or I'll be declaring myself ineligible because I was the landlord rep here for the co-op above, but I do want to say that it was an absolute pleasure dealing with the owners they, I believe personally that they are the type of owners that we will support and love in this neighborhood. They're responsible, they're friendly, they're kind, and they're well-priced in quality food and drinks. So I'm very proud and excited to have been part of it. I will not be able to vote for obvious reasons, but I just wanted to uh, say a few words of support. Okay, well, that's wonderful. Anyone uh, from the public here? Oh, we've got Paul. I'm sorry, Paul, you wanted to say something? Welcome. Thank you. Well, how are you? We're very excited about this. This is great. Um, let's see. Uh, anyone who's not a committee member who would like to speak? Whoever is who's ever got the mute? television on, could you please mute? Thank you. And it is very sad. Um, I guess, should we call the question? Yes, so those in favor, raise your hand. Committee members first. And <laughs> not the president's own stuff. It's like, Paul, are you, are you uh, voting for like seven, right, Christian? I'm sorry? I see eight. I see eight in favor right now. Uh, uh, seven in favor. Paul, are you voting? Uh, seven in favor right now. Anybody against? Let's lower hands. Okay. Anybody against? Anybody abstaining? We know dog is. 
Well, I'm not abstaining. I'm ineligible. Just you know. You're, 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 you're called abstaining for cause. No, no, uh, no abstaining. Just ineligible. Okay. Paul, uh, Paul, did you vote? Paul. You're Paul, did right you now. vote? Okay, so that vote was seven zero zero one. No, no committee members. That's a one zero zero zero. One what? One zero one zero zero zero. Who's the one non-committee member? Mark Diller. Thank you. Okay, it's approved. Thank, Thank you. you for coming. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Entonces, más comidas, comidas latinas. Fantástico. You got Lolo's chicken snack. <laughs> uh, I have another application on a change in method of operation later. You would just want me to wait back and wait till it's called? Uh, yeah. You know, okay. Fine. Sure. And thank you, committee. This is not going to be a long night. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, 2799 Broadway. Um, I think we've got Lolo Lolo's uh, chicken sack. Hi, Hi, yes, my name is Leticia Young, and I am the owner of Lolo's, which will um, also be the DBA, will be Lolo's Tacos. So we'll be serving up um, Caribbean and Mexican fare. I'm yeah. also the owner of Lolo's Seafood Shack, which we like to say is a Cape Cod and Caribbean mashup. Um, so this will be, this new restaurant will be at 2799 Broadway off the corner of 108th and Broadway. And um, I can tell you a little bit more about myself and our operation. So the restaurant is owned by um, myself. Our executive chef is Raymond Mohan, who is um, one of the founding fathers along with Douglas Rodriguez of Nuevo Latino Cuisine. We've both been in the industry for over two decades. Um, many of you may remember Patria or Chicama. These are some really great restaurants with Nuevo Latino Cuisine and um, Raymond was there. His uh, uh, background also includes working in fine dining under Jean-Georges and David Burke. Um, I myself am also um, a part of the fine dining restaurant community, even though it's a little bit different of what I studied um, in school. I'm a Burley grad on the Upper East Side, as well as a graduate of the University of Pennsylvania, where I studied communications. Um, I also went to the French Culinary Institute and also did the Columbia Community Business Program here in Harlem. I'm born and raised in New York and um, we're really excited to bring this concept. Actually, it's going to be focusing on the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico and Central America, actually specifically Belize. So it'll be a Mexican and Caribbean fusion of sorts. And um, our method of operation is also in our package. Yep. And we expect to be open um, till 2, 10 to 2 a.m on the weekends and till midnight otherwise. And I'm happy to take any other questions or provide as much information as possible. Our current restaurant, Lolo Seafood, has been open for seven years. Where, where is that located, Leticia? It's on 116th Street off of 8th Avenue. I should know that, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Did you uh, say did you say um, cuisine from the Yucatan or did you say Belize? I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Both. Yes. So our food, it's going to be um, Mexican food, but it's also going to cover food from the Yucatan Peninsula. Okay. So that includes, you know, different parts of Central America, including okay. Belize. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Sounds exciting. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Love another. Lolo's and excited to have you in the neighborhood. I live a couple blocks from there, so. Ah, oh, thank you, Andrew. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. So, uh, Leticia, I noticed that you're going to have live music. We did include live music. We don't expect to have a ton of live music, but if we um, have some maybe light jazz, 
on the weekends to accompany brunch, we wanted to be covered. So we did include that in there. So it's not like a mariachi band. It's on the brunch, which is also cool, but not that's not not consistent with with the fine dining experience. Correct. It would be, you know, some light jazz or something like that. Something jazzy. Uh, uh, do you have any uh, uh, soundproofing? Any, I'm sorry? Soundproofing. Um, this is a second generation restaurant space. It was formerly Casca Bell Taqueria. Right. So, yes. Thank you. So, and when do you anticipate opening? I would hope to open um, within the next two months. Great. <laughs> Hopefully before Halloween. We look forward to it. We look forward. Any well, questions uh, from uh, the, the committee? Anyone have any questions? Uh, this is Ben. I just want to say I'm a follow, fellow Penn grad and excited to see a new concept uh, launched by a fellow Penn grad. And so uh, excited for you. It sounds great. Thank you. Go Quakers. <laughs> Go Quakers. Okay, let's put the question. All those in favor? Put your hands up. Doug, is this one of the few that you haven't done in the neighborhood? <laughs> I was not part of this, so I can vote. Yeah. Okay, so that vote is 9000. Zero, zero, zero. Okay, let's get our hands down. Okay. Non committee uh, members? Non committee members, that's 1000. Zero, zero, zero. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, and welcome to the neighborhood. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, do we have 505 Columbus here? Wait, before we do, uh, we've got Nicole Painter in the house. Nicole, did you have an announcement to make about taste or anything? Oh, sure. If now's the moment, uh, Taste of the Upper West Side will be back on October 1st and 2nd. Uh, all guests will be uh, vaccinated and show proof of vaccination. So we're hoping it will be extra safe and we're allowing more airflow and changing some things for that. So we hope to see you there. If you're interested in attending, you can check out our website, tasteuws.com and reach out with any questions or I'd love to extend a discount to you. So please just reach out through there and I'll, I'll set you up. Thank you. And who is it benefiting this year? Can, I'm oh. sorry, this wasn't in, on the template given to me. Can, can the person who just spoke just put that information in the chat? Absolutely, yes. I will. Thank you so much. Yeah. I mean, Thank you. She's Thank the you executive all. director of the Columbus Avenue bid, so. Uh, Irana, you can put that on the new business. Yeah. Thank okay. you, Kristen. Okay. Um, 505 Columbus. Uh, yes, this is Jay Espinal speaking. Great. Fantastic. So, tell us about your location. Uh, 505 Columbus, it's uh, Tosca. Uh, Tosca is a Spanish and Latin Caribbean restaurant. Uh, we've been um, open consistently now since February. Uh, we opened the mid-pandemic, uh, I guess, on uh, November 12th, and we were forced to close with the indoor closure, uh, with the closure of indoor dining. So uh, we've been operating since February 12th. Wow. I see you're going to be open on the weekends at 4 a.m.? Uh, I have to four weeks. So since we opened in the, uh, during the pandemic, um, I, uh, dining was only allowed till 12 o'clock and things haven't really kicked off. So we have not stayed till four uh, yet. Um, but going forward, we did want to have that opportunity. Sure. And I see also you're going to have live music. Okay. Um, so for the, li for the live music, I know when I was, um, when I went before the committee last time, um, my old restaurant on page, we used to have like a three piece uh, salsa band sometimes like uh, live music. And um, we haven't done it yet again. And we also used to have uh, flamenco dance. Uh, so the committee, I didn't have it on the license and the committee said, you're not gonna bring back the uh, salsa. So I said, you know what? I didn't, I wasn't anticipating, but uh, I contacted Rai y Susan Sonete and they're eager to come and uh, do some live music. We will probably be doing it in the, uh, lo the lower level of the, uh, of the restaurant. Right, that that's a cavernous restaurant, so I think that that you should have you shouldn't have an acoustic uh, problem with your neighbors. Yeah, um, we haven't had any um, we haven't had any issues whatsoever. And then um, 
our neighbor is Prohibition. Uh, so their <laughs> their music is a lot louder than ours. Are they <laughs> reopening? I'm sorry? I don't think they've reopened, have they? No, they have not reopened uh, since they have not reopened, but um, I spoke to, I think Michael was anticipating opening. Um, great. So everybody always asks and everybody always has great things to say about them. So um, I, from, from what I've gathered, I, I would love to have them back actually. They'd be great neighbors. I ask a question um, on the document submitted that I see, it says it's still pending for disability and workers comp, but it, I know it says 2018. So oh, we do have, they're in place, they're in place. Both of them, and I can um, I can probably if I have to submit them uh, as soon as I get off the call. And I see also you're going to be doing uh, uh, you're going to have dancing. I'm sorry. You're going to have dancing in the establishment. Uh, I you know what we didn't have dancing at the old place, but you know if people I don't know I don't anticipate having we're not going to do any dancing things, but I don't. You know, sometimes people move in their seats a little bit, <laughs> okay. even when we have Mark Anthony in the background now. That, that would probably would precipitate. That would probably be private parties in the basement. I can't imagine. Yeah. You, but it you is. don't have the space on the on the uh, almost grade level to do that. So, yeah. And that's what we're submitting for today is um, sometimes with the uh, so, so if there's a group downstairs, sometimes they want to be able to have um, not do like a full uh, bar package. And they want the guests to be able to just pay for their own drinks, still be part of a corporate party, but pay for the drinks separate. And that's why we're doing the filing today. Okay. Any questions from the public? Can I just confirm that, um, um, Jesus, you said of oh, 4 a.m.? We do have, um, we did, we do have the 4 a.m. on Wednesday, Thursday, uh, Friday, uh, from Wednesday through Saturday. And then, to yeah. Sunday, through Sunday on the application. And, and, and through Sunday, yeah. Wednesday through Sunday or Wednesday through Saturday? We have Wednesday through Sunday. I, I, it was submitted Wednesday through Sunday, yes. For, okay, thank you. Okay, yeah, call the question. Are those in favor? That's eight, and let me look with the hands. Anybody against? Anybody abstaining? Or not eligible right. to vote? Okay, so that vote was A000. Zero, zero, zero. Uh, non committee members? That's uh, 1000. Zero, zero, zero. Great, thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, we've got nine committee members. We've got an 8000. Zero, zero, zero. Did somebody not vote? Uh, Benjamin, uh, was that uh, in favor or uh, uh, against? I uh, I thought I voted. I may have been a split second late. Sorry okay. about that. Okay. But I so voted. Uh, it's 900. 900. Zero, zero. Okay. Zero, zero, zero. Yeah. Yeah. It ran and we got 900. Zero, zero, zero. Okay. Right. But 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 the previous one, uh, just so I'm clear, the one, the, the, the vote for Agave was 701, right? Yeah. Uh, Paul, uh, we didn't record a vote for you on Agave. Uh, uh, were you voting in favor for them? Who? Uh, Paul, Paul, can you unmute yourself? Can you hear us, Paul? Unmute yourself? Yeah, because the numbers, I just want to be consistent. I have 900 for... Yes, I hear you. I have 900 for Lolo. But Paul, I did, have... did you vote for Agave? Yes. Okay, okay so, so there's your 9000 on that. No, no, so no, it's no, it was 8001. No, 8001. Oh, 8001. Okay. Why are you saying 00? zero? Because uh, Doug is, is, is not, can't not vote you. because he represented. I know, the, but that's 801. No, Somebody no. just said 801. No, that's an, 801 would mean he'd abstain. We don't have an abstain here. Yes, no, abstain, and ineligible. There are four categories. Yes. There, there are four categories. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. We used to call it abstain for cause, but now we're calling it ineligible. Okay, got it. Okay. Less confusing. So, uh, 130 West 72nd. Good evening, Rosa Ruiz for the applicant for Friedman. Oh, hi. It's for class change. Hi, how are you? Hi. So nothing else is changing. They've been there forever. 
You sure have. So what, what's the class change again? I haven't, I should ask him. It's got it in front of me. Um, they're, they're upgrading from, they're upgrading from beer and wine to full liquor. Oh. Yeah. Right, which business is this? Friedman's. Friedman's. There are two, they have two restaurants, Miranda, on 72nd Street. They've been here for a long time. No, I'm, I'm just, I don't think I have the documentation is all I'm asking. That's all. Oh, okay. You should text. Yeah, you're right. I, uh, we got an email today on that one uh, with a share from uh, Jesse, so you may not have seen it. It's a little, it's, it's a big file. Yeah. We had some issues with the uh, Google Docs. But uh, I got it. They're applying for a class change? Yes. Yeah. Okay. No, so, nothing, nothing else changes. Yeah, no, the, the hours of operation are the same, uh, 8 a.m. to midnight. So they're moving from wine and beer, wine and beer to a full... Uh, but actually, 11.30 to 10 p.m. I've got... Oh, I'm sorry. I, 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 missed, I, I, I missed it. You're right. You were correct. I'm looking at it. Yeah, you were correct. Yeah. Okay. So uh, any other questions? All those in favor? Raise your hand. Okay. That is 9000. Uh, Non-community members. That is one zero zero zero. Okay. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So uh, 145 West 72nd. La Dinastia. Ms. Alain. Who is presenting for La Dinastia? Oh, he was here earlier. Uh, I didn't yeah. have those. Oh, yeah, he's here, Mr. Lamb. Uh, unmute yourself. Yeah, he's muted. Oh, hi. How are you? <laughs> hi. <laughs> Again. Hello. So, tell us about La, La Dinastia. Oh, yeah. So, we've been here since uh, 1986. My father opened up this restaurant here in the Upper West Side. Uh, we we serve Chinese and, and, and Latin <laughs> cuisine here. Uh, a lot of Cuban dishes, your traditional Chinese American takeout dishes here. We've been here for a long time. We've only been serving uh, beer and wine ever since. And uh, we're just trying to get the on-premise uh, license just to try to pick up some business uh, because uh, ever since the pandemic, we've been very, very slow. Um, I am currently working as a restaurant worker and uh, I have been ever since I've been here. Uh, I took over maybe uh, about close to seven years ago. Uh, that was when my father retired and I uh, have my, my business partner here with me. Um, we've been here for almost seven years and uh, uh, ever since the pandemic, we've just been uh, suffering and struggling. Uh, we're just trying to pick up some kind of uh, new way to make money. So uh, we're just trying to get our on-premise liquor license. I, I think, you know, this is, I mean, what could be better than a martini with a picadillo, you know? <laughs> right, right, you know. But I, I certainly hope that that improves business. business we hope, you. yeah. Right, any, other, any other questions? Okay, so all those in favor, raise your hand. It does eight. Uh, lower that. Benjamin, are you eight. voting? Okay. Okay, that's nine, nine zero zero zero. No committee members. That's one zero zero zero. My hand keeps going up. <clears throat> hey, thank you and uh, good luck. Good right, luck. Thank you. thank you, Richard. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, wonder, Richard wonderful is amazing. Video. In case you yeah. haven't been, but I'd be shocked if you haven't. They've, they're a neighborhood stalwart. They're, they're a great neighbor. So. Thank you. Okay, so now we have 452 on Southern Avenue. Hi, yes. How are you? Good Hi. evening. Hi. 
Um, my name is James Lam, and I'm the co-owner of uh, Sentai Comfort Food. Uh, my partner, actually, her name is uh, uh, Vera Murray. She is a chef. We opened our restaurant since uh, last year, about uh, April, uh, during the pandemic time. So um, we are trying to, you know, getting uh, some of the business uh, picking up. So we are looking for uh, the class change also for the uh, from the BNY to the full acre. We are trying to see if we could uh, add some uh, uh, Thai cocktail drink uh, to bring up the food revenue. And also uh, uh, maybe we could be able to uh, get some uh, uh, new ingredient, you know, to match with our Thai food uh, promoting in the neighborhood. Uh, we are open from uh, 11.30 a.m. to uh, 9.30 p.m., uh, seven days a week. Um, we basically just uh, a new in the neighborhood. So we are trying to be able to see if we could uh, um, continue our business with uh, another seven or eight years. So this is the, uh, the, the try we are planning to do, um, see if we could pick up more business. Any, any comments? Um, you've gotten a, you've gotten a lot of you've gotten a lot of accolades and, and a lot of good reviews. So bravo! Thank you. I hope it's more Thank than you. seven or eight years. I hope it's seventeen or eighteen or twenty eight or forty eight <laughs> years. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Kabun ka. Kabun ka. Kabun ka. Thank you. Yeah. All those in favor, raise your hand. Okay, so that's nine zero zero zero, uh, non community members. Right. So that's one zero zero zero. Oh, good luck. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. So, what Thank you. Okay, so that brings us to four forty two Amsterdam Avenue, the Jeep Mill. I have to just, I'm ineligible to vote. Who is that? That is me. I'm sorry, I have the, the minutes in front of the screen. Is Josh. that Josh? <laughs> yes. Okay. Josh, yeah. you, that, you, his, his, his resonant voice, his mellifluous tones, you can't I know, I thought that Thank was you. him. <laughs> uh, hi, this is Mitch Banchek speaking for the gin mill. I'm and Michael Stafford. Sorry. <laughs> um, so we uh, we're basically here to, to notify the community board of two different things. First of all, uh, when we did our renewal license recently, we realized that uh, at, as part of our method of, of operation, we um, didn't have down that we were doing live music. Um, we didn't realize we didn't have that. We've been doing it for you know the better part of 25 years on and off. Um, there's no issues with it, um, so we're hoping that you guys would give it the, or your blessing, and we're also here to notify you about uh, the outdoor alcohol service in our uh, cafe, in our uh, restaurant, uh, open restaurant program on the street, and that's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, you're the first uh, restaurant that's uh, putting that application in for the uh, serving on the, uh, on the open streets. Yeah. Pardon? And you're the first restaurant to apply in that fashion. So yeah, we're doing it the right way. The, the SLA requires that we notify the community board right. and we'll let you guys know that this has been and, doing. And, 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 and you're, you're a great Thanks. part of the neighborhood. Thank you. You think so? Any, any questions? Any, any questions? comments? Okay, so uh, 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 all those in favor, raise your hand. Uh, uh, Benjamin? Okay, so that is A001, because Josh is non eligible. And uh, uh, below with the hands, uh, non committee members, and that's 1000. Um, actually, I meant to say uh, we were taking a bundle 
both on both uh, resolutions. So we have to we don't have to do it twice. Both on the uh, uh, the change of the uh, method of operation and the uh, the uh, liquid license to the uh, uh, S3, S3 side. Okay. Yep. Okay. So then that takes us to uh, finite interlocutors. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, good evening again, Community Board 7, Ben Savitsky, Bernstein Rado. This is for the Consulate NYC LLC. Uh, they operate the Consulate, which is a, a restaurant at 519 Columbus Avenue. That's the corner of Columbus and 85th. Uh, Matoja is here. He is the operator of uh, the Consulate. Um, we're here tonight for a change in method of operation. This is not a new application. The change we're looking for here is to add live music. Um, those of you who are not familiar with the Consulate, it's a restaurant. It has primary, primary influences in French cuisine, but it does serve cuisine from around the world. Um, we included a copy of the, the menu so you could check out um, what they're actually serving. This is a, a legitimate restaurant. Some of you may recall that before this was the consulate, this was a, a restaurant called Machiavelli, uh, which was known for live music. Matoja in, his, in his, his year or so of operating has had a number of people come in from the neighborhood asking about the live music and where it went and why Matoja does not have live music. Um, and it's pretty difficult for him to explain to people that he can't just put a piano in, that it wasn't part of his method of operation and, you know, because he was never planning on doing this. Um, but it's something that he would like to provide to the community because it seems like residents of the neighborhood really did enjoy that Machiavelli experience. And it's something that, that he wants to add to what he's presenting to the neighborhood. So what he would like to do is, is have live music in the form of, of ambiance for ambiance in, in the form of, of background music uh, once or twice a week. Um, and it would be either a piano player unamplified uh, or a jazz trio unamplified. Um, and it would be about one to two hours uh, per session. Um, and it's really just kind of a response to what the neighbors are asking for. It's not something that, that he wanted to do initially, but he seems like, you know, if the neighbors really want it and it's something that might add to the experience, he's, he's willing to give it a shot. So that's why we're here tonight. It, it was very pop popular at Machiavelli. And, and I can't imagine it wouldn't be popular at at Matoja's fabulous restaurant. So I, I don't know, and, and it's, it's it's acoustic. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's really background. So. Right. So, so, Sounds yeah, good. I, I mean, like, I never thought about it, like uh, that I should have like live music, you know, back in the years, I used to run a, a place in uh, downtown West Village where we had like live music every single day. Uh, it was called like um, a jazz room, you know, so I said, like, okay, the, 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 my neighbors are asking all the time, like, why the piano is not here? Why there is no live music? <laughs> why this? Why that? You know? so, so I was asking, like, the neighbors, which they live above me, like, uh, months before. And they said, like, uh, the neighbor above me, she said, like, um, I've been here more than a decade, and I never heard, like, noise or uh, even from that piano. So... So probably the, the space is uh, uh, pretty well isolated uh, from acoustic and stuff like that. So soundproof, yeah. He probably soundproofed it when they first started it because you couldn't even hear it if you were standing outside the restaurant. Yeah. Matoja, what's the name of your restaurant in the village? Uh, so the place that I used to run in the village, I used to run like six different locations in the oh, village. Oh, okay. So this was a place called why not jazz room? Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you. Yes. Anyone else from the committee want to comment? Anyone from the public? Non-committee members? Right. Mark? So what, wonderful. We hope we hope that uh, uh, this enhances your location and uh, get you more uh, more patronage. Thank so, you very much. All those in favor, raise your hand. Darn right. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Then okay, so I'll come by the piano and you know do some ballads for you. It's that okay. is nine zero zero zero. Uh, non committee members. That's one zero zero zero. Great. So uh, we're going to move over to uh, new business now. A sort of new. As part of new business, we'd like, I'd like for us to have a discussion on that. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, yes. I, Go ahead. I, I think I made it. What happened to um, the gin mill? We, the, we took out the boat 
uh, uh, one vote for both uh, resolutions. So I didn't understand what you just said. Chris. Okay, number seven uh, is is the same restaurant. They had two applications. They had two oh, applications. So it's the same. I got it. Okay, it's the okay. same issue. So it's the yeah. same vote, and that's the, the one that vote. Josh is. Um, Correct. Yeah. Okay. Correct. Fine. Thank you. It has made a mess. What was that? Hey, Josh, was it Jim Mill originally? Was that once the left bank? Quarter Moon Saloon. And before that, it was a left bank in 19. 19- I'm, I'm too young for that. <laughs> I'm too old, but I wrote a Thai cookbook with the gal who was the owner of it. That's how I remembered it. <laughs> For Janie Button upon. It was the left bank. It was Ode Cuisine. Right. <laughs> okay. Was it, um, uh, so as I was saying. No, Doug, we're old, man. We, we, we'll, uh, I'd like to start with uh, having a discussion on uh, what may be the future of the restaurants, you know, uh, uh, given that what uh, transpired at Food Board and uh, also transportation the other day. And before we open it to uh, mo- uh, multiple comments, I'd like uh, Andrew to give us a background, if, uh, if, that's, available, if that's possible. A background introduction. I'm sorry, back, I didn't hear, background introduction on just on open restaurants. Right, yes, and uh, anything you can tell us uh, that you may know of that hasn't been uh, known yet. Um, great, sure. Uh, well, I'll, always is full disclosure, obviously, through my work. I know all the committee members know uh, I work uh, and I'm advocating for restaurants, so I'm also familiar with the open restaurants program. So, you know, essentially the next steps, you know, based on our last meeting that the city has proposed, city planning has proposed a text amendment to remove sidewalk cafes from the zoning resolution, uh, which we had discussed at late last meeting. Um, But the next steps really are to see one, what happens uh, when city planning votes on that, but two, uh, the city council will have to introduce legislation to, basically codify different aspects of the future of outdoor dining. It's currently operating with the temporary emergency program that you're all familiar with. The goal, my understanding under the permanent open restaurants program will be to standardize it and make it more sustainable, address different concerns, what's worked, what hasn't worked, uh, and really think about the program long-term. Again, this was set up uh, you know, quickly in the midst of a crisis to help save thousands and thousands of restaurants and it's credited with saving about 100,000 jobs, or I should say hiring back 100,000 people to work in the industry. So the city has not yet, I should say the city council has not yet introduced legislation um, with all those specifics. So it's hard to say exactly what it will look like other than it'll be, you know, all features of the current program, but hopefully that'll be more sustainable and standardized and address some of the concerns and what worked and what didn't work. Um, once the city council introduces that legislation, there will be public hearings. I'm sure the bills will be, you know, amended and then ultimately the city council will their vote to pass it or not. Um, they vote to pass it. It goes to the mayor. The mayor signs it into law or doesn't. Um, And then usually the legislation will require rulemaking from the various regulatory agencies. It appears at this time that sidewalk cafes will be moved out of the realm of the Department of Consumer uh, Affairs and Worker Protection to the Department of Transportation. Yeah, Mm -hmm. to the Department of Transportation. And at that point, that agency would have to introduce rules, which get into some more of like the nitty gritty specifics of how the program will work. There'll be public hearings on those proposed rules. They can then be modified um, and approved by the city. And then the goal, as stated now, will be a transition period for restaurants to apply for the permanent program and basically a time frame in which they can then transfer from the temporary emergency program into the per- permanent program. They say that would probably happen around 2023. It could happen sooner. It really depends how this whole legislative process goes right now. Um, And that's kind of where it stands. I think a lot of the questions that people want to know based on what I've heard from our last board meeting is, you know, what is the application and community board review process going to look like? Where are sidewalk cafes going to be permitted? Where are the roadway 
uh, cafe is going to be permitted? What are they going to look like? Um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Again, that's all going to be based on the legislation that's introduced. And I suspect that we as a committee and perhaps a full board may want to comment on those proposals uh, when they arrive. You know, Andrew, here's the thing. We, we invited DOT to come in and talk to us about maybe they had some more granular ideas since they didn't know at that at our joint alleged joint meeting with uh, land use and uh, transportation that they were now in charge of the open seating. Everywhere. Yeah, so I would. That's a yeah, problem. I mean, so, so nobody they, knows what they're doing, and I know we've got a new administration coming in and all, but it, it, it's. Yeah, it's I, I would just. I'm not 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 to def, not trying to defend anyone, but you know, they're an agency, so this is legislation that has to be introduced yeah. by the city council. So I think it is difficult for any agency to, you know, make any definitive comment on any future policy that has not yet been introduced and you know enacted by the city council and signed into law so i think that's why some of the questions that people are interested in i totally understand why cannot always be answered i will say and i forget if our committee received it but dot does have a presentation on what dot or what the city wants the future program to look like um we we, what we received was uh, the zoning the zoning amendment, the text amendment that was largely redacted, 52 pages of largely redacted content. And then yeah. we got that, so, what, 10 minutes, an hour before the meeting. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I was, I, obviously, I can't speak on behalf of the city, but I can say, yeah. you know, the, the, the text amendment is, is one thing. DOT, there is a presentation on what they imagine the future program to look like. It is similar to the temporary program. You'll have the option to use the sidewalk. You'll have the option to use the roadway. There will be similar restrictions and limitations based on, you know, distance requirements uh, for ADA, you know, American Disability Act. There will be limitations if there's bus stops, if there's other types of obstructions. Um, there's discussion about whether or not the program for the roadway will be year round or be seasonal. Seasonal, Obviously, if it is a seasonal program, what is put in the roadway becomes a bit more complicated because you'd have to remove a structure, it couldn't be permanent. Um, so there is a overview that the city has, but again, that's gonna be subject to what is introduced in the city council and what the rulemaking processes, both of which have opportunities for public comment. Um, would, would it be precipitous for, um, for, for Christian or, or, or me to um, go on the, the Department of Transportation um, on the DOT website and um, send the link to everybody on our committee so we could review it, uh, unless you have no, it? I, uh, no, I don't think so. Um, I don't know. Um, I'm just looking right now. I, you know, I, 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 they have a, I, they do, they've done a presentation to groups before. Um, I think on their website, sorry, I'm speaking slowly because I'm trying to pull it up. Um, While you're looking at Yeah, there is information. So what there are, let me see. Um, I, I, I will put this link in there. I don't want to just, Doug, you can jump in. I was just going to say that the presentation uh, I, I watched the presentation at least three times, maybe four. One was, it was presented to Borough Board. It was presented, I believe it was presented at Land Use. Uh, I do not believe it was presented at our- The, the, the Land Use presentation was a good to keep up in person. Not the idea. I'm sorry, you're, you're, your bird squashed you there. Yeah. As a, a land use, the dog, he's got the bird. <laughs> yeah, at Land Use, they had the DCP presentation, not the DOT presentation. Well, there's no, they, they had the presentation that was from urban planning, um, in city planning rather. Yeah, well, well, it is a text amendment change, and and it, it, um, it, it I don't know if it's. I mean, it's sort of intertwined because it's it, it references the DOT taking over the plan. I think it's the same presentation. 
Yeah, I mean, here's what it says, like on their site. And there's also a link um, where it says uh, for feedback as the city continues to plan aspects of the permanent program, NYC DOT is welcoming public feedback. So people independently, I mean, or as a board, you could send comments now. But what it says is vision for permanent program, essentially what I said, available throughout the city, allow for removable tables and chairs subject to clear path and other siting criteria. Both sidewalk and roadway seating require license agreement. Both sidewalk and roadway seating administered and enforced by NYC DOT. You want to just, can you put the link in the chat? Yep. So putting we can in, all take a look at it and putting that, it in right now. Can pass it on. Great. Okay. So this is something that, especially like Miranda and Benjamin, you're going to want to read too. Um, so, there we go. Thank you. Uh, I like uh, people to start thinking that uh, just so you can be ready when the uh, uh, hearings uh, are available and, and the uh, open comment uh, period is, all, is available so that we can properly comment. Uh, one of the things to be thinking about is that uh, uh, from, from what they said at the uh, DOT and the DCP presentation, I got the feeling that what they're envisioning in terms of the uh, roadway structures will be simpler than what many people have out there right now. And I wonder how that transition is gonna go where people uh, may be required to uh, dump, uh, uh, downsize what they're used, what they're doing right now. Uh, uh, have there ever been any talk about that uh, in the uh, Hospitality Alliance, uh, Andrew? Yeah, I always tell you my organization has done multiple seminars and send out multiple uh, messaging messages to the industry, alerting them that what they have currently in their roadway or even on the sidewalk where some people have built, you know, physical structures, right. you know, likely will not be permitted as is. So they would either have to be removed and replaced or in some cases, perhaps they will be able to be modified. So we've tried to communicate as best as possible to people that will listen <laughs> that whatever investments they've made or continue to make, just be cognizant that that may change and what's permitted today will likely not be or have to be modified um, you know, in, in the future. I think also one of the conversations that I've had with people, there's big differences in what different restaurants have, both on the sidewalk and in the roadway. And part of this was like a function or an evolution. Uh, when this program was first set up in June of 2020, you know, we didn't know how long this was going to be going. Then we got to the winter and you didn't have indoor dining. So people tried to winterize them. Then it got warm out again and people tried to dewinterize them. I don't know if that's a word, <laughs> but um, then you know, the weather changes and this whole evolution of all of these things. The rules had changed a few different times between the city and the state of what was permitted, what was not permissible. Um, so it was really kind of a go with the flow, try to survive situation. Um, and that's resulted in, I think, a lot of the differences in the different um, Designs. But it, it's all these ambiguities. And, and, and one of the things that we saw in, in, in June 2020, June 19th, 2020, was that there were no directions. And then all of a sudden, uh, a week later, when everybody put their stanchions out in the street, um, all of a sudden, uh, DOT and DOB, and they were coming out saying, you're going to get a fine if you don't have a, a, a a structure that, that goes up, you know, 36 inches by 18 inches. And that's what I'm afraid it's going to happen again, because no. there have been no criteria, no clear criteria. And that's what we keep experiencing. Yes, it is the agencies, but the agencies have to drive it. And legislation is separate. And, yeah, and I, I'm afraid the restaurants are going to get penalized again. Yeah. So, listen, I am always in my professional capacity, often fighting with the city on this or that. But in June 2020, when the program was stood up um, for the roadway seating there, let me say, they launched the program June, I think, 20th, 2020 or June 22nd. Yeah, June 22nd. Once, about four or five days later, they retroactively changed 
the roadway requirement for safety purposes to require that the barriers were larger and they had infill. At that time, there was, I think, and I could be wrong, something around like 2,000 restaurants had set up. So they had and to they were scrambling to find people to build them and they, yeah. were, about, and they were being threatened with fines. Yeah. Well, well yes. they and, then, yeah. and then they change and then and then and then but you know since then it's been like 8,000 or so you know so more than 6,000 others have and it wasn't retroactively changed one of the things that's going to be different um here I presumably is that because it was a program to respond to a crisis there is self-certification so as a restaurant to participate you basically self-certify that you are in compliance with everything on the DOT website. And then that would be subject to an inspection. Different from pre-pandemic sidewalk cafes and what I imagine will be under the permanent program is there will be an actual review process from the city, probably DOT, uh, also perhaps presented you know, to the community board and they come for an application before they're able to set it up. And hopefully that will mitigate or eliminate nearly all instances of restaurants building something in the sidewalk or in the roadway, and then having an inspector come and say, oh, no, no, this is in, com in compliance. You know, people were losing their livelihoods. The rules were changing every day. People were dying everywhere. They were trying to do whatever they could to build these things. And, you know, it wasn't always there. And I think that's one of the issues that members of the community have is that there's been a lack of standardization and some places are in compliance, other places haven't been. Mm -hmm. And I think under a permanent program, you know, what you'll present, what you're building or putting outdoors to the city, the city will have someone who reviews it and they will approve it or they'll tell you it's not approved and you need to make X, Y, Z changes. Um, and then what you build will have to be in compliance with what was approved. And it worked fine. I mean, when we, you know, pre-pandemic with sidewalk cafes, you know, but, it was rare, you know, it was, it was a different scenario. So I think there was just no way. There's 11,000 restaurants participating and they needed outdoor dining immediately. So there was no way that the city could have gone through a lengthy uh, review process right. of everyone. And that's why they did this self-certification. Uh, yeah. Uh, I just want to say, right, just talking about the self-certification process is very, it's similar to a, an architect plan with DOB. They can they have the option to self-certify. Local law, local law 11. Well, no, I mean, it's, it's for any DOB permit for the most part. And, uh, you know, architects, some will choose to self-certify and not. And, and I think what happened here is that some restaurants, uh, most of them, you know, I think we're very good actors, but some of them, you know, kind of <laughs> took advantage and maybe, you know, rather than asking for permission, wanted to ask, you know, for forgiveness first. And I think that kind of happened. And I, I trust that it's going to be a process. The thing that I'm really bummed about, and I have great respect for our, all of our board colleagues, including the people on land use, who very, you know, clearly expressed the concern that we're going to lose our opportunity to have a seat at the table. Um, and I understand that um, there is a little, it, 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 it's concerning the way it's written, but I, but I think what has happened now is that since we voted against it as a full board. By one point. What's that? By one vote. By one vote, right. I, but I think what, and I understand the, the reasons behind it with, with, with respect. The problem is now the messaging is being used and is being weaponized. And there are other boards around the city who are now saying CB7 voted against this, but of course they omit the very, the, the very, um, uh, what do you, what's even the word? I'm so worked up, uh, you know, emphatic support we have for restaurants, even within that resolution that we wrote, of course, it's just, it's just... you know, a lot of, a lot of other boards now just basically omit that and just say CB7 is against it. Well, we, you know, so it's, we were not against the program. We're just, we, I think fundamentally we wanted to make sure that we, we, we couldn't necessarily vote for a program. We haven't seen it yet. And there was a little bit of faith to understand that we absolutely will have hearings. We absolutely can advocate. And I believe that we will, you know, that these applications will be coming before us, but I'm just bummed about it. And um, we just have to move forward.
I think there was a I preponderance. Have a question. Of, yeah. Um, when are we? Um, when are we going to meet with transportation and land use so that we can, so that we can come out of this process with something everyone can agree on? It, we we were supposed to have a random, but they we they kind of uh, trend, um, land use decided to take the meeting over, and they re we really didn't get a lot of opportunity no, but, to. But but can't we now revisit this issue and have joint meetings so that we can come out of this with something we can all agree on? Well, okay, that's an idea. Let let me ask everybody on the committee. We could, but I would say then let's make it BCI kind of stewarding this rather than land use that are, well, that are more concerned so with process we, and transportation. Well, I'm wondering if, if we could just have a separate, instead of it being held in one of the three committees, why don't we just have a separate special meeting of BCI, transportation and land use? Because we did. Well, you know, you know, the problem, Arena, is that and I think I think it's a great idea, Arena. The only thing is that the city, the public hearing process for the text amendment change required the boards to weigh in. And we did on that particular issue. We obviously we can take up new issues and, I, I, and whatever I, we but I, that I vote would, has been made. Yeah, I would say that uh, once uh, the city or the agencies released some information as to what the program will look like, that's when we can make. Because then we will have something to discuss. I, I guess, I mean, Irene, it's a great idea. The whole yeah. idea is that the, the, these are the three committees that really do have skin in the game. And we should be meeting, and we should be meeting um, in harmony. You know, we should be, ah. we meet, yeah. So, so Kristen, am, am I under, to understand that you're recommending that we wait now until um, uh, the city? Uh, uh, yeah, until we have information from the city, all, all we can do is speculate. I, I don't think that's productive. Uh, Mark? So without rehashing all the votes that have already been taken, um, one of the things that it might make sense that would inform either a joint meeting of the various committees that have skin in the game, as Linda said appropriately, um, is to start um, with your expertise, just develop um, lists of things you'd want to see either preserved or done differently from the current program. Um, so that whenever these guidelines come out or whenever it's appropriate to have that joint meeting, you're ready for it in a way that can drive your agenda forward. One of the things, that's already, been, uh, one of the things that's already been touched on here, for example, is the issue of whether or not it should be self-certification. And while Josh has on any number of occasions um, explained how some other businesses have taken what I'll call liberties with the um, design uh, and uh, the design requirements that are in the, 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 the DOT website and, and indeed, which itself changed unhelpfully in the middle of all that last summer. Um, Self-certification um, is a powerful tool so that you don't end up standing around waiting for an approval process. Um, I'm sure that's the reason why they allowed self-certification a year ago um, and I'm pretty sure we don't want businesses, uh, I, well, I'm going to bet you a good beer, um, preferably at one of Josh's establishments, that, um, uh, that, uh, that the legislative process will take all of the time between now and when the text amendment expires uh, or the, the current program expires um, to come up with whatever they're going to come up with, leaving the restaurateurs with 11 seconds to actually implement whatever it is they come up with. So... Um, having so being ready for that might make a lot of sense. Um, I, I would I would urge us to to vote in favor of self um, certification because uh, if derelict concrete suppliers that cause great risk to 720 West End Avenue can self certify even after being caught failing to test, why in the hell not a restaurant about a sidewalk cafe? Um, I think they're also one of the things that you might want to think about in that forward-looking part of it is under current practice, as far as I understand it, there's no opportunity for a review or an appeal from the self-certification process. You either self-certify or you don't. Um, and we ran into that with Fred's where 
they couldn't change. And there's, so there's two parts of it. One is an appeal process and the other is the parking regulation process, which combined to screw Fred, uh, Fred's because they couldn't put they something couldn't in park. around the corner yeah. and they, they had a unique situation in front of them vis-a-vis uh, -vis a turn lane. Um, all of that should be subject to some kind of realistic approval. And I would like the community board to be a part of that. Um, and then the thing that is being excised from the zoning resolution that you wanna make sure we agree with, whether you're for it or against it, there were places that the zoning resolution prohibited um, outdoor dining. And some of them may be things that we don't wanna see come back in a new set of regulations under a different agency. Um, anyway, and some of them we might want to preserve. So uh, all of that suggests that there's plenty of work to do between now and when the regulations come out or so when somebody starts drafting them so that you're ahead of the curve instead of reacting to it. And Mark, we, we, did, um, we did submit questions to DOT that were pertinent to the restaurants primarily in our neighborhood and our community, but DOT said that they didn't have any answers and did not want to meet with us. Just an FYI, we were trying to get ahead of the curve and try to start a dialogue that was particularly pertinent to the needs of the restaurants and the community rather than ULERPs and transportation, et cetera. But isn't it, isn't yeah, it likely they did, sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna say, isn't it likely they didn't wanna meet because they just don't know yet and they don't wanna give misinformation or wrong answers? Well, I think part of it, uh, certainly Probably, a year maybe. ago, they, they had to create something with, that's a one size fits all. They couldn't go neighborhood by neighborhood and get it done in the time frame that they needed to get it done by. And none of us wanted them to, you know, take the summer last year uh, to to reinvent these things. But now we have the winter to think about it. And one of the things that goes away uh, in the zoning resolution is a neighborhood by neighborhood um, uh, adjustment or eligibility for certain things. And now would be a great time for us to say, here's what makes sense in our neighborhood. Yeah, and, and, and also, uh, Josh, what, what uh, the response of our representative from DOT was, well, I've already met with land use so, and, and, and transportation, so I don't see why I have to meet with BCI. That well, I mean, the response. I, 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 unfortunately, that's because they're, they feel like they've, they're looking at the board as a whole. They're not looking at the committees, and that's, that's wrong, but that's probably the reality of it from their perspective. It probably is the reality, yeah. So I think just that, Unfortunately, you know, we kind of got left out almost, in, almost intentionally, it seems. That means the restaurants did. Right. Uh, uh, Nicole, I would be interested to see if you have any comments. No, I'm just, I'm just listening to you guys. I think you've hit it all. Um, we just need the restaurants to have enough information ahead of time to make, make a plan and get their items and ready. How are your restaurants doing on Columbus Avenue? Um, Miranda and, and, and Benjamin, if you're not aware, the Columbus Avenue bid extends from 67th Street to West 82nd Street on Columbus Avenue. And so there are about a dozen restaurants there and, uh, and they've brought a lot of business to the neighborhood. They've brought a, a lot of um, awareness to the neighborhood and neighborhood restaurants through Taste of the Upper West Side, which is 20 years old now. Yeah, um, I think our restaurants are, are doing as well as possible. Um, a lot of them have some really like loyal clients from the neighborhood. That's what I've heard from some of my restaurants, but there's still, you know, numbers are down. We're doing open streets every Sunday to try to draw more people out and um, give them a bit more space. Some of them can't take advantage of that because they don't have the staff capacity, but we're still trying to draw people out. Um, and we have a couple new ones coming. So we're hoping that they can keep pushing and, and doing as well as possible at this time. Great. What yeah. new restaurants are coming? Uh, La Pecora Bianca should be opening soon, I think. You guys approved that a while ago. Um, what else? Manny isn't new, but he took over from Bistro Cassis, and he's doing well. Um, what else? We have a new chocolate shop coming. Not really a restaurant, but still food. And then I thought a new one was coming tonight, but I saw they withdrew, but um, hopefully some more. And assets relatively new, they're doing really well. They're doing a good business every day. Um, yeah, so doing what we can. That's great. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you. So uh, any other comments about anybody, any, any other new business? 
No, but, but Miranda and Benjamin, you're brand new to, to do, you have, do, do you have any questions or comments? You, you haven't really opined. Um, I, I do. Oh, oh, yeah, go go ahead. Ahead. No, no, I was just going to say, I think that um, I really like the outdoor seating. Um, obviously, I think the concerns for people are around safety and consistency. And now that, and I saw, sorry for a little bit of background noise, but like, now that we know that as a city we're moving forward with this, I think having consistent guidelines that feel make people feel comfortable um, that we're doing is the right thing to do, um, and doing do, doing it consistently and safely I think is a great thing to have. So I'm very excited that we're um, we're discussing this topic. I actually have one more comment, if if it's okay. Yeah, uh, it seems sort of relevant to this is the ongoing issue with bikes and the bike lane and the speeding and. Um, all of the restaurants that are on the side of Columbus Avenue that have the protected bike lane are having to navigate that as well as their customers. Um, so just keeping that in mind as like a major safety issue um, as it moves forward. Yeah, I so. think it was Doug. That's a good point. Doug and a few others had mentioned, you know, could the bike lanes be put on the outside of the roadway seating and then have some sort of protection? Right. Well, we, we, had, we had suggested that uh, DOT kind of said they weren't going to, we had suggested that back on the 19th, by the no, way. It's never going to happen. It's never going to happen. But what was interesting, I was out with Barbara Adler last night, and we were on Columbus Avenue between 83rd and 84th Street on the uh, east side of the street. And um, there's supposed to be buffers. You know, there's a, there, the restaurants, there was, if the restaurants were supposed to, to my understanding, we're supposed to be like a, a little buffer and then the bike lane. And none of the restaurants have that. They, they built directly to the bike lane in, you know, um, in they right contiguous with the bike lane so that there was no buffer, no place to step out of. So that's one what, what kind of exacerbates it. Also, the fact that um, whether they're commuter or delivery bikes, they go two ways. And that's where on Amsterdam and on Columbus Avenue. I would okay. also, now I'm thinking of a lot of things. Um, one other thing would be to have some sort of process for disputing like a city bike location. We have one or two restaurants that have a city bike dock in front of them and they're not able to use that extra space. Um, and there's not really a process to ask the city to possibly move that or, you know, go around same, that. Same with bus stops. Yeah. Yeah. We have uh, transportation. We have advocated to move bus stops, and I mean, it it, it happens. It's difficult. Not that easy. Yeah, I think we have to be really careful about moving bus stops with the um, number of senior citizens in our community. Yeah, sure. I, I think there's a big difference between I, you know they're like apples and oranges. Uh, city bike docks can be moved a lot more easily than bus stops. I, yeah, but I, the Department of Transportation think, treats them the same. Right, and I think that moving a bus stop from one block to the next. Dip, again, it, it just depends on where. I, I understand, I understand. The uh, bus seems to stop every three blocks. Okay. You yeah, Miranda, too. yeah, Miranda, you wanted to say? No, Miranda. Yeah. Um, I don't, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm new here, so I don't know if this is too much of a swerve topic wise, um, but given what happened at Carmine's this week, I'm just wondering if that's like within our purview. I mean, I think, both sides of the allegations are pretty serious. Um, and, you know, the footage, is, it, it's a developing story. And I'm just wondering if that's within the board, something that they would take any action on, or especially within the committee. Again, I'm new here, so I'm, it's more of a process question than anything else. Um, yeah. It, it's not, honestly, it's not something that we, that we would take up because of it's, it's, it's not that it's volatile. Believe me, we love volatile issues. But because it, it, it really has to do with uh, positioning, I'm a publicist positioning and repositioning. And um, if you've been in Carmine's, uh, then you would know whoever had walked into Carmine's, the three people who are claiming now that they, they, had, that they had walked in and that it wasn't they who had stuck. The point is that they walked in because it's a bi-level place, they wouldn't have seen what was going on on the outside had they already been inside. So there are a lot of issues there. There's repositioning. It's, it's more of a PR situation than it is a very sad situation, but you had three people. And, and I think uh, what I was asking uh, with our restaurants are, were they having a hard time? Were they getting a lot of pushback for, um, and Josh answered it for, for, you know, when they requested the new rules, requested, uh, you know, the, to see 
the vaccination, proof of vaccination as people walked into their restaurants. And so very, far, that very, hasn't Very happened. little pushback, a little bit, but yeah. not, not much. Yeah, I think with the Carmine situation, to your point, Linda, it's evolving. And yeah, I, I just think it's a little early for us to intercede. I agree wholeheartedly. And, and, and by the way, the owner, the owner of Carmine's was a, a board member here. And he was co-chair of the Business and Consumer Issues Committee for many years. And he's, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm skeptical on many levels about, you know, the, but we'll see. It's a story that's evolving. It's, 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 it's a legal issue right now. They should deal with it in the legal realm. Um, I would just say the one thing we could potentially discuss is, you know, restaurant workers are fearful now. And yeah. there are a lot of restaurant workers, restaurant owners in our district. And regardless of this specific situation, when you see on the news someone that's assaulted um, while they're working, it creates a lot of fear. And when you see it being on the front page of the news and on every channel, it creates more fear because you don't want to be in that situation. And perhaps there's something we can do messaging wise to restaurants and restaurant workers in the community that, you know, you can be safe. You know, it's a horrible situation, regardless of this situation, to be fearful to go and have to do your job. I mean, the city has put in tremendous burden on workers to enforce this requirement, regardless of what your opinion is about the vaccine requirements. Exactly. And I think but the message as a community board is that we have their backs and no violence is acceptable. But it's not limited. Oh, sorry. Oh, no. But Andrew, it's not limited to just restaurant um, uh, workers. Uh, even um, merchants are dealing. Retail. With retail. Yeah. They're all dealing with. Well, they don't have a vaccine. They don't have vaccine requirements. They do have. No. Gyms do. Have, no. They have no. mask requirements. They have mask requirements. And there are no, many, some of them still do. And that's they, their personal choice to their business. And, and, and exactly. But my point is, when it was required, they were under attack and in, in, in not physically, but, you know, people being belligerent and confrontational. And for those that still insist on people wearing masks when they enter their establishments, they have to deal with similar um, pushback. So I think if we're as a committee, if we're going to take a position on this, I don't think we should limit it to restaurant workers. Agreed. No, oh, understood. Sorry. Yeah, I, 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 I misunderstood what your point. No, absolutely. I was just responding in the context of restaurants. Yeah, that the was context raised, was but yeah. the vaccine, the, the vaccination requirement is, 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 is relegated solely to restaurants. You don't have to prove you're vaccinated to go to Nor you know, to Nordstrom's. Uh, well, also, I, I realized that, but some some stores are still requiring masks. Yes, and there are yeah, people who are giving, um, giving paid, uh, giving um, uh, store owners and, and 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 retail workers a hard time because they yeah. don't wear masks. Hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. And I, yeah, I mean, there could definitely be outreach and messaging to everyone. I, yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's, you know, uh, Carmine's is a great example on that level because they get a lot of tourists from out of state. And uh, so that, and, and I have in-laws in the UP, in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, who absolutely refuse to wear masks and thinks it's their, I don't know, God-given right to uh, infect other people. But, uh, but it is not their God-given right to go into a restaurant or a retail store. In Manhattan. In New York City, anywhere in the world, it's not your back anyway. Yeah, I agree. But anyway, the point is that so there, there's going to be pushback to it. A lot of it's going to be cultural. It's 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 a tough situation. It, it is. It really is. Okay, uh, uh, Paul, you want to talk? I think they should make it a felony for assaulting an essential worker like the hostess. If that's if that if that's what it proves to have been the case, absolutely. I mean, they, they have that for transit workers. They sure do. If you assault a bus driver or you assault a taxi driver, it's a felony. Right. This woman has become an essential worker, 
at this point in the pandemic, make it a felony for assaulting her or any other hostess that asks for proof of vaccination. And also it should be, there should be more publicity at the airports and with people arriving to the city. I, I'm willing to give the benefit of doubt that they probably didn't know all of the, the rules. I'm trying to give them the benefit of doubt. But anyway, I'm not as I that. said, make it a felony. I don't know what happened yet. Stop I don't quickly. Yeah, we, we don't know what happened yet. So, I, I mean, it, it, it specifically with Carmine's. Correct. Okay, let's, let's uh, try to wrap this up. I thought. Okay. Well, well, Paul just said something that I was just going to suggest. I believe it was some of our elected officials actually called for greater fines for um, assaults against. Uh, I mean, Schumer did. Was it Schumer? So, yeah. if there's actually a proposal or legislation, we can decide whether or not we want to support it. If if okay. it comes, if it comes out, I personally, I personally would. Uh, and um, the other, well, this is a separate point, which potentially is actually a question for Andrew. Um, do we know yet where we are with the temporary liquor license permits? Um, is it still up, you know, at, in, with the governor to sign or has it stalled out? Can Andrew, was Andrew there? They're muted. I have my... So, sorry, no, you, you cut out for a second on mine. I had it unstable. Say that one more time. Oh, so the question was, do we know where the temporary liquor license permit legislation is? I know it was, I thought it was up at, up in Albany with the governor to sign there it. Need, there needs to be technical changes made to it potentially. Um, and, you know, if they come back for a special session before next year, hopefully they can make those changes and uh, it'll get done, but it's Everybody, horrible. I mean, there's so many places that are just waiting and waiting and now they're gonna have to lay people off because they can't get their liquor license yet. Does everybody on this committee know what, what we're talking about? Or Well, for the benefit of some people who don't know, I and correct me if I'm wrong, Andrew or anybody else, my understanding is that everywhere in New York State, except New York City, a temporary permit can be issued so that a, a restaurant this is, does not preclude the 30 day notice to the community board, but um, there's this long process. It's just sort of like an ongoing joke. And it's not a joke that it takes six to eight months to get a liquor license. And for what I believe is no good reason. And that's after community board approval. So this would allow businesses to operate. It, it, it is similar to the self-certification in that if the state find some discrepancy somewhere in their application, they can, they can revoke it later. But, but my God, the amount of, of revenue and jobs that the city is losing uh, because we have this exception, it, in my opinion, is ridiculous. And I hope that we eventually just, it gets up to Albany and gets done because it's, I mean, to uh, wait. How many restaurants do you, do you surmise, you know, or do you estimate in, in New York that this has uh, had, you know, had an impact on? Everyone. In other words, anyone who's ever, uh, you, know, what, you know, in my, my work, we have to negotiate, you know, long periods of free rent and then contingencies. Everybody's ready to go. The restaurant's ready to go. The, the, the contractors are ready to go. The architect, the landlord. But we're waiting you know, they're the waiting for their liquor license. And so there's, you know, if they can't get the liquor license, a certain business model restaurant maybe could not survive. Some can survive with or without a liquor license. But I mean, to have to wait six to eight months for a liquor license is just uh, so antiquated. And it probably, I'm not a, you know, I don't have a degree in finance or I'm not an economist, but I have to imagine it has cost the city billions of dollars over years. And you know, I, I think that's an interesting issue to take up, but I think we need some data on that. We need some, um, maybe, maybe Ripco can, you know, your, your firm can provide some because you work but, with a lot. Well, uh, just, do, I mean, do you have, do you have the figures, Andrew? Do you have any data on that? No, I don't, we don't know how many, I mean, it, you, you could find out how many licenses are pending maybe by a FOIL request or something, but you know, there's also many deals that, never happen you know you'll never know about because as doug could explain often you'll go to sign a lease and if it takes six to eight months to get a liquor license the landlord won't stick around that long so they won't end up even filing with the sla 
Um, yes, and so, so maybe, it has, maybe you know, we should maybe we should we think about this and and maybe draft something and bring that to you know to our committee as, uh, next month as a resolution. It's very. I'll just say it's very. It's very technical. I mean, you can do it right now. Yeah. It's just there's a technical issue, and they need to get together and figure out if they're coming back for a special session and what priorities are going to be. Um, you know what what those priorities during a special session are, and hopefully this will be one of them. So I would say if it happens a special session, um, you know the community board could certainly discuss you know a resolution in support of it. And I and it, and it's it's it is I believe as of right in the rest of the entire state of New York. How is that possible? I don't know why. I mean, SLA I is a state is a state uh, agency. That's correct. But this is not, not legal in New York City, but it is. I believe. I don't, is there anywhere else it's not legal? I think Andrew, it's, isn't it? It's no. You no. Yeah, you can have it. Yes, you can have get temporary liquor licenses throughout the rest of New York State, just not New York City. And on that happy note. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, unless there's any objections, uh, uh, we will. Uh, Motion to adjourn. Second. Aye. Okay. Thank have you. Have a good both. night, everyone. Good, good night, everyone. Have thank a good you. night. Kristen, good conversation. Sure. Um, okay. Kristen, can you just explain how I get how I save this to the um to the Google Doc? The what well, save what? The no, the minutes. The, what, what when you're when they're ready, email them to me and Linda. I will take care of it. Excuse me? When, when you when you're done with it, email them to me and Linda. So I, I've never she, used she did it as a Google Doc so that oh. she either not, have to. Let me just say that I have yeah. never used this template before, and yeah. I don't want to lose what I've written. So if you could just tell me where it says share, um, like how do I send this to you guys? Because I'm using my office um, computer. Okay. When it says share, if you click share, a uh, dialog box will come up which you then can uh, put in an email address uh, with the person you want to share with. Okay, there's a lock where it says share, so. Okay, so you're not allowed to share that. Uh, you can uh, download it to the hard drive. Yeah, you may have to download it. Download it to the hard drive and then you can email it from there. There'll be a symbol on the top, on the far right, that'll say download and you can download okay. it. Wait, 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 on the far right, it says download? You'll Hold see on. a symbol. Oh, um, oh, what does the symbol look like? Hold on. Can you show it? Yeah, huh? it's a downward arrow. It, it, it's got the it's got the the printer pictograph and it's got the then the one with the downward arrow. Okay, on the file. Uh, uh, on the file, under the file menu, one of the options is download. Okay, got it. I just saw that. So download as as what? As a as Microsoft a, as a Microsoft Word document, yes. Okay. So download. Okay, so I did that. What do I do next? Then you go what? save as. The, the, I open, should I open that document? Mm-hmm. Okay. You, well, you don't have to open it. What all you need to do is uh, go to your email and attach it to the email. She's got to save as first and, and, and I, name I, it. I, I, I told you, uh, also on the, on the, the file menu, there is an option that says email. Oh, yeah. So you can also use that option, email this, and now, uh, yeah. and you can then put in uh, our email addresses there. I would do both, but I'm, I stink at Google Docs, so follow Christian's advice. But I, but I do belts and suspenders with this so I don't lose it. That's it. All right, I'll play, I'll, play, I'll play around with it because I, I'm not sure. I've never done this before. Um, I probably, okay, I'll figure it out. All right, guys, I'll get it to you in a, in a few minutes. I'm just. Okay, but the, and, and, and we, thank you. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> I'm sure so, you've got Google Docs. No, I don't know. All everyone, right, thank you. Have a okay. good